Good evening. Welcome to the February 19, 2019, Herbie Unified School District Board of Education meeting. Roll call, please. Here. 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 Uh, Jasmine Leva. Here. Camille Camarcio, absent. Shadine. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Atkinson, will you please lead us in the flag salute? Thank you, Mr. Atkinson. All right, on to our inspirational comment, Ms. Ortega. Thank you. Um, and our inspirational comment will be um, on inspiration today. I really uh, get asked often what I think the difference between motivation and inspiration is, and, and this is what I say or I've come up with. The word inspiration comes from the word, late Latin word, inspirare, which means in spirit or divine guidance. So inspiration is something that you feel on the inside, while motivation is something from the outside that compels you to take action. And what I tell the students nowadays is that we need more um, inspiration than we do so motivation. And um, I tell them that may they live their life purpose with uh, passion and courage as well. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Reports from closed session. Mr. Brooks, we're good? All right. Thank you. Uh, item number one, welcome 2018-2019 student board members. Mr. Duchon. And tonight it's member. So, Jasmine, could you please tell us about Rubido High School? Um, good evening, fellow board members. Unfortunately, our three-day weekend is over. During the month of February, we had our Falcon Pride Day. Eighth graders from Mission Middle School were introduced to many classes and educational information. Volunteers from our associated, associated student body, Link Crew, and National Honor Society guided the eighth graders through Rubido High School. Later that day, around 6 o'clock, we held our Best of Rubido, where students and parents come to explore the various clubs and sports Rubido has to offer. A lot of our athletes attend this event to show their pride. Upcoming events for this week include our first home track meet on Thursday. Um, it's away. We are very excited to see what becomes of our boys' volleyball. It is new to our school, and today they have a varsity game away, and we'll be having their first home game tomorrow. Lastly, for spring sports, swim will have their first league meet at Pacific February 27th. Another upcoming event is our blood drive on February 25th. We will be having sign-ups this week, and we hope to gather more donations now that the seventh graders can, oh, 17 year olds can donate without um, parent signature. So it will, be, it will be a new experience for them. This month, the science fair will be taking place and students from our school will be attending. That's all I have for today. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. Okay, uh, on to recognition, uh, 2A. Recognized Del Sol Academy teacher, Mr. Dubrowski. Thank you, and Mr. Atkinson is here. Can you stand so we can say some nice things about you? <laughs> and as he turns a little bit more of a shade of red, um, Mr. Jason Atkinson, teacher at Del Sol Academy, was presented with the Sharp Ideas Award from Culver Newland, a Corona-based company that sells school and office furniture. The honor, which includes a $500 furniture grant, was conferred this month at the Happiest Expo on Earth Awards celebration at the Disneyland Hotel. Mr. Atkinson, for years, has dissolved barriers between traditional and high-tech learning, and anyone who knows Mr. Atkinson could probably talk for at least an hour about the great things he does, both inside and outside of the classrooms. But for tonight, congratulations on a well-deserved honor. Thank you, Mr. Atkinson, again, and we appreciate uh, your continued dedication to our students. Anyone else want to chime in real quick? While we're here, I'm. I'd like to congratulate Mr. Atkinson because I've known him for a long time. He started at Ann Arbuckle when I was a secretary there, and we knew he had 
lots of ambition and lots of ideas. Um, he's also one of our very ingenious teachers in the district who continually strives to create new, more modern ways of learning for our students. I think in his other life, though, he may have worked for Disneyland and that old, um, uh, in Tomorrowland, the old circle in the round, Carousel of Progress, it was by GE. Well, I think maybe um, he must have been a part of that because I think now he could probably create one for education and show us maybe the next 30 years what it'll be like or maybe in some start a Carousel of Progress like that for Disney. Thank you for what you do for our district. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Chard. Anybody else? Good. All right. Move on to item 2B. Recognize Mrs. Paula Ford, AXA Region 19, sorry. 2019 Business Services Administrator of the Year. Mr. Duchon. Well, it's interesting because there are two people in the district that don't like public acclamation. It's Jason Atkinson and Paula Ford. So, <laughs> hooray to both of you. Um, I would like to embarrass you as much as possible, both of you. But Paula has been recognized by AXA, which is the Association of California School Administrators, who are our peers and as the Business Services Person of the Year, and it's, it couldn't be more deserved. We are so fortunate to have Paula in this district to make the numbers balance and shepherd our budget, shepherd our money, and run our business services. It's highly deserved, as both of these awards are. So I, I think you should stand up so you could feel even more. <laughs> I'll probably pay for that, but it's worth it. Congratulations <laughs> yes. to both of you. Thank you, and thank you, Mrs. Ford. Uh, we continue to appreciate, uh, I know the board does, uh, all your efforts throughout the year. So thank you. Okay, board comments. Ms. Ortega, let's start with you tonight. Well, again, I won't, I won't ever get tired to thanking our student, or only one student tonight that came out. It's a school night, so thank you again for, for coming out and letting us know what's going on in, in your schools. Again, we don't have enough time to be there, so we appreciate you for being here. Um, and yeah, congratulations to the recognized tonight. Um, it's, it's a beautiful thing to know that the work that you do and just starting, you know, um, at this whole academy um, and the, the, the heart and hard work that you put in. So thank you um, as well. Um, and I just have a couple of uh, events coming up next month. Um, we have Riverside uh, County Educational Summit uh, the first week of, of March. Also, I will be very busy with uh, CABE, our Riverside chapter. I um, am the uh, vice president for 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 the California um, Association for Bilingual, and we will be hosting um, that meeting um, here on the 13th of next month. And then the annual conference, will, which will be coming up the end of the month on the on the 20th. So I plan to to attend um, to attend that. And that's about it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ortega. Mrs. Bradford. I want to tell you about some brilliant minds that we're developing here in our district. I received two emails last week from students at Troth Street Elementary School. They said they were studying the Senate and senators and asked me why, why had I chosen to run for the school board and, and why did I want to be on the school board. So this is, these are from a nine and a ten year old. Um, they didn't mention their teacher's names, but Mrs. Crocker is, is the principal, and I called her up to tell her how much I respected kids that age who are asking intelligent questions. Um, one of the students obviously read my bio on the district website and congratulated me on my successes. So that really made me think about what's, what's this kid going to be in his or her future life when 
in interviewing for jobs and you always want to know, does somebody do their, do their homework? What do they know about why they want to be here and what? So it showed me that this mind wants to know who's, who are the leaders in the community, do I trust them, and will they answer an email from a nine or a ten-year-old? Um, I, I also wanted to uh, tell them that coincidentally I'd been invited with uh, Superintendent Duchon and Assistant Superintendent Dr. Hansen to visit the school. As we toured the school with Mrs. Crocker, all around there were signs up saying, be kind, kindness, and, and just other things to be encouraging. And a, a bulletin board out in one of the hallways that where kids, students could post encouraging notes to each other. There was one little girl that I was really proud of. She was wearing a t-shirt that said justice. And I thought, that's a really great concept for a kid until she told me, no, it's a, a brand of clothing. <laughs> so Jasmine, you could have told me that, but when, when you see anyone with a justice t-shirt on, say, I believe in, in questioning authority and, and coming up with your own answers. So thank you, as always, for being here. Thank you. Mrs. Chart. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I do want to congratulate Mrs. Ford um, because I feel that you're the wheel and the glue that keeps this district together and going. Um, your job is quite valuable, and I know that you've put a lot of hard work in, so this acknowledgement that you're receiving this award is something that acknowledges the work that you and your team to do, and I'm sure you wouldn't be there without your team, but congratulations to you. Um, you're always there if we have a question, you know, hesitate to answer, or usually you know the answer, but occasionally you have to get an answer for us, and we appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I also... Um, want to remind everyone that the Indio Date Festival is going on in both our high schools, Rupa Valley and Rubido have um, their FFA students, their ag departments there showing their livestock and my granddaughter is one of those and I received a letter from her and some people also receive letters asking that they come out and um, watch the, cheer the kids on in their showing of their pigs and then their um, have their live auction on Saturday. I also received one from another student, Austin uh, Church from Rubido. And they both, just to give you an idea, and I know it's kind of hard to see, but they both send a basic letter that invites everyone. And then they have to prepare something up that tells a little bit about themselves and what they did. And both of them prepare a letter like this. And this is part of what FFA teaches them. It it's, encompasses everything, not just going and take it, raising a, a pig or a sheep or um, lamb or a goat or whatever you have. Um, they have to, everything has to be perfect. The teacher approves everything. Um, they have to take pictures. They have to send information. They have to get addresses. They learn a lot um, from my granddaughter's letters, the letter that she sent and all the others. They all tell a little bit about it. And she was so excited because she, she gets to show her pig that she's been grooming and she's proud that she's taught this pig that she got that didn't behave and didn't do anything. She's finally got her to do uh, walk properly. And if you um, reach down to pet her, she rolls over and wants you to rub her belly and things like that. So they're learning not only if they have home pets, but this is something else. This is a different thing that they, they learn about. And um, Austin was telling me in his letter that he stepped away from that for a, a year. And now he now he's back in it again. And he wants to that's what he wants to make his life. He wants to be a farmer or in, in the agricultural department. So it really gives them an idea of what they want to do and shows that they can um, accomplish something. Um, I also attended the budget meeting this past week and um, I learned a little bit about, uh, a lot, I learned a lot about the budgets and um, all the people that it takes that are involved in it, that, that have a, um, a part of that budget that it affects is unreal and they come with really good questions to ask and Mrs. Ford has um, great answers for them what she can answer but it all depends a lot of it depends on how the budget up in Sacramento goes and how how things go everywhere so um, 
it, it, it is a learning experience. That's the first time I've been on that uh, committee. Um, I think that's all for right now. Thank you, Mrs. Chart. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Regal. Um, would like to congratulate Mr. Atkinson. I mean, I just met you five minutes ago and you're so casual. Hi, I'm Jason. You know, um, that is quite an accomplishment and um, really glad that you're a part of our system and encouraging kids and um, these sharp ideas, just keep them coming. Enjoy shopping for that furniture. I, I don't know what that means. Is that desk furniture or? Okay. Well, congratulations. And of course, Paula, I mean, you absolutely, uh, you work very hard and this award is well, well deserved. Um, I can't thank you enough for how many, whether they're relevant, irrelevant, or frivolous questions or big questions, you're always um, clarifying and explaining. I mean, it, it's like you're an encyclopedia because you seem so casual and, oh yes, that's what this means, and you'll go into the full depth and really help the board understand a lot of the um, information to the business services, so congratulations. I also received a letter from Austin at Rubido High School inviting um, inviting me to attend the fair this Saturday. I'm <clears throat> doing everything in my power to see if I can juggle my schedule to be there as part of the auction. That would be my first fair um, with animals and auctions. I'm kind of excited, so um, if I can get down there to India, I'm definitely that is a first priority this weekend. A few things that I did over the past couple of weeks since the last board meeting, um, I did attend that 38th Annual Black History Parade. It rained and rained and rained, it poured, and then moments before the parade started, the sun came out, so um, it was impeccable timing. Um, really fun, cool experience, and with other people within the city that are really involved, uh, that's with the um, refreshment. The Sports Hall of Fame, yes. So um, it was a great experience and uh, appreciate everybody's hospitality. And then on the 12th, I attended the facilities meeting and um, Dr. Hansen, thank you and your team for walking through that. We have a lot of projects, so there's gonna be some updates um, later tonight with all of our subcommittees, but I'm sure you're gonna cover most of it. And there's a lot going on in our district and uh, it it's, a big machine, so thank you for walking through that. I'm sure there's a lot more questions I will have coming, but um, I walked away feeling a lot um, com more comfortable understanding everything, so thank you. And then on February 13th, I was invited to the NEAJ meeting. Um, I want to thank the NEAJ for inviting me and uh, welcoming me, and um, everybody was very friendly. It was great to see all of our the council or the teacher reps attend the meeting. Um, they definitely run a tight ship and very detailed. It was a, it was a great meeting. On the 14th, uh, on the spur of the moment for Valentine's Day, I did go to Patriot High School CIF basketball game. Um, it was really exciting. I, we thought it was in the bag. They were doing really well. And then right at the end last quarter, they were down by three points. But congratulations to that accomplishments to Patriot High School uh, basketball team to make it to the CIFs. And then, uh, February 12th, Mr. Owens at Patriot High School also hosts monthly meetings and um, he had Dr. Luna and Dr. Huff come forward and cover the um, drug signs and things like that and really educating parents of, you know, what's going on right now and uh, they really went into depth and were able to answer questions to parents. Um, it, some people are clueless and I mean, we, we spent a lot of time to make sure that we're talking about it, but it was definitely a great way to power together with the educators and, and the campuses and make sure that we try to keep, you know, our schools drug free. <clears throat> and I also want to wish uh, Trustee Garcia a very happy birthday. And um, hopefully you're going to enjoy the rest of the week celebrating or the month. But uh, is this 29? <laughs> 30. 30. Okay. <laughs> well, happy birthday to you. That's all I have today. Thank you, Mr. Regal. <clears throat> okay, I just have a few things. First, uh, you know, Mrs. Ford and Mr. Atkinson's congratulations again. Uh, I had an opportunity to go to Del Sol last week with, with Mrs. Ford. Got to see Mrs. Stevens and Mr. Atkinson, and had a really good time. Also saw Jasmine there. 
She was, uh, I think your brother goes there, right? So uh, got to spend some time with Mr. Atkinson and some of the students coming in, got to see him in action. So um, really great program. I'm glad to go. I'm uh, looking forward to the next one, Mrs. Stevens. And um, uh, last week, uh, the three of us here went to the Riverdale High School uh, military veterans interview. And we had um, 45, I think, veterans that showed up for that. And so each of them uh, was assigned a table. And there were two or three, four or five kids uh, that got to interview the veterans. And it was a really nice event. We got to see the cadets uh, do the flag ceremony at the beginning. And um, we all spoke a little bit. And then the whole interview, and then we had lunch. But it was really well put together. And I want to thank Mr. Uh, Brett Robel and uh, Major McClough. They did a really fantastic job, along with the cadets, for that. Um, did also get to go see a basketball game, uh, Patriot High School against Grand Terrace a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they won that game, so that was, that was good. And uh, I got to see a soccer game as well, uh, Patriot High School. Um, I think February 6th. Uh, they won that game. I think they eventually uh, lost in the quarterfinals or something, but they did a fantastic job. Uh, tomorrow's the Lions, Spe Lions Club speech contest, so anyone interested in going out and uh, seeing our students from high school compete, and they compete for, for prizes. Once you get to the district level, uh, the, the Lions Club district level, they start getting scholarships, like $4,000. The winner in California gets like $22,000 in scholarships, so uh, we have some really great students that speak, so if you want to go tomorrow, 6 o'clock, the Lions Club, to be there before 6, and would like to see you out there. Uh, finally, I just want to mention uh, that we had a lot of rain last week, and I know there was a lot of projects uh, that were opened. Um, I got a few phone calls <clears throat> from teachers and, you know, about different schools, and Talk to Dr. Hansen, and um, you know he did update the board on the following day with, you know I think there were like 54, 58 work orders uh, that were in progress. So I mean that's quite a bit, uh, you know a lot of rain, kind of unprecedented rain. So I want to thank Dr. Hansen and his team, uh, Mr. Tolan and your team. Please make sure you let everybody know that we appreciate all their hard work, and I know you guys are trying to get to those uh, those issues. And that's all I have for tonight. So we'll move on. Uh, on to item number four, public verbal comments. I don't have any pink cards up here. Is there anyone who would like to address the board? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to number five, <clears throat> administrative reports and written communications. 5A, Career Technical Education Showcase. Mr. Dabrowski. Thank you. I wanted to invite you to our Career Technical Education Showcase. It's going to be held on February 28th at Patriot High School from 5 to 7 p.m. This event will feature all 19 of our high school CTE pathways from Rupa Valley, Nueva Vista, Patriot, and Rubino High Schools, as well as the CTE programs from our adult school, RCC, Norco College, and Cal Baptist. Students will demonstrate what they're learning, and they are excited to share with both students of all ages and, ages and members of our community. Everyone is welcome. And also at this event, a number of our elementary and middle school students will be demonstrating their skills and activities in the area of technology and robotics program. I know many of you have attended in the past, and it's going to be as good or better as the ones we've had before. It's a, it's a great event, and I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, Mr. Dabrowski. I look forward to, to being there. Any questions or comments on the board? I think this is the second year we do it. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. I think a lot of us were there last time taking pictures and um, asking the students questions. And I think us being there too um, shows the students how important um, that is for us too. So, and it takes a lot of organization. I think Mrs. Pace didn't even sit down for one minute. So um, that shows, so thank you. I, I agree. I think last year the students really enjoyed us coming and asking questions. And um, they even turned around and asked us some questions about why we chose whatever we were, had done um, as a career. And some of them are, doing, are in the pathways 
to try and make a decision. That's not necessarily their decision that they're going to do, but it has given them a different outlook on, on how to make a decision about it. I know the culinary teacher said in his class, the kids learn how to read a recipe, which you don't necessarily have to have if you want to be a, a, a builder, but if you want to cook something or if you want to build it by the plans and you have to know how to read things and they felt that that was one of the added things was learning the different aspects of a job whether you're in the culinary arts program or if you're in the um, uh, construction program you're learning the aspects of how to the money the finances and all that so the program is really good for the kids and it really it really brings the thinking out in the, in a lot of them thank you i look forward to it all right anybody else Jasmine? Nope. Okay. All right. 5B. Review GASPI 75 requirements and actuarial report for other post employment benefits. Mrs. Ford. Under GASPI 75, government employers are required to report their other post employment benefit costs and obligations. In Harupa's case, the other post employment benefits are retiree health benefits. The district uses a pay-as-you-go plan, uh, which budgets retiree benefits to be paid each year. However, GASP 75 requires OPEB expenses to be accrued over the working career of active employees and that the accrual is shown as a liability on an annual audit report. Our pay-as-you-go estimate expense for this year is $2,094,189. And in conjunction with the GASB 75 requirements, we uh, contract with NIHART, an actuarial firm that has completed an actuarial valuation of our retiree e health program. And a copy of the report is in your backup materials. And this Thank is an information Ford. only item. Okay. Any questions, comments? All right. 5C facilities program update. Dr. Hansen. Thank you. So <clears throat> this evening it might be a little bit longer than in the past because I want to cover a couple areas, um, show what's in progress now, what's in design to be finished in, uh, by the end of the EE money, and then also what is on the horizon and the needs that exist within the district, um, the ongoing needs that exist. Uh, so first of all, just some of the construction projects that are in progress or, or soon to be. Um, Mission Bell Elementary School is closing up. We're hoping uh, to finish this project off, which the remaining portion of this project is the new MPR, or sorry, the new uh, Library Media Center, which was the former MPR. Uh, the classrooms, the office, and the new MPR, those were finished uh, long ago. Uh, so th there's no impact necessarily to the school site as the library currently sits in uh, some classrooms on campus. But uh, we're hoping that this project will be complete by the by the, uh, next month. West Riverside Elementary School is underway as well. So they've uh, right now they're working on the earthwork out there, moving dirt and getting ready to start uh, vertical construction at that school site. <coughs> As a reminder, that will be the construction of a new office, a new library, uh, makerspace area, as well as 10 classrooms, including uh, kindergarten classrooms. So those will all be new buildings being built. And then we will also be renovating um, what was formerly named, or at a former board meeting, uh, uh, the Rear Admiral Allen Boot Hill uh, building, so that's being renovated, and then the former office, or the current office now, will be renovated as well. So that's that's the scope of the project at, at West Riverside, and that will um, take about 18 months to complete. This is a picture here of, of the building long ago on the left, and where the current building and how it stands now, and then the next picture is a rendering of, an artist rendering of what that building uh, we're trying to restore it as much as possible to its original uh, architecture and so that we can showcase that, that building. The interior will be uh, like a lab space for those students, a maker space. Troth Street Elementary, the sewer project is underway. Uh, we're working our way towards Troth Street. We've gone through the nursery, working our way through the church property now, and that project um, will be completed by the end of next month as well. 
if all goes well. Obviously, with the rains, that slows this project down a little bit, but uh, they're moving along quite well over there. And then the last project that will be underway, I've, we've got a start date. This is estimated in, in the summer. We have to kind of, you know, we are working on a football field. That impacts a lot of different programs um, in terms of soccer and, and football and, and other uh, uses for the facility. Uh, but we're looking at maybe uh, starting this in June. And this is just really a turf replacement and a track replacement. There's artificial turf there now, but it's run its, its lifespan and it's in pretty bad shape. Uh, this is not covered by EE. This is money that is from the developments in the area um, and should be a pretty quick project because we're just, you know, essentially replacing what's existing there. Um, and we'll obviously have to work with the school site on the timing, but we're looking sometime over, over the summer after graduation. So these, are the, these next projects are in the design phase right now and they will be paid for with the remaining EE dollars. And as, as, um, as a piece of information, we just issued our last portion of the Measure EE dollars, received that at the beginning of this month. So we are in the final phase of the $144 million, and that final issuance was just, just over $48 million, if I remember. Um, so we, we're, we're coming to the end of the, of the program, and these next projects will be covered with the remaining funds. We've got Glen Avon Elementary, which you'll see tonight. We went out and bid that project, and we will bring those bids to you for your approval this evening. Uh, that, again, is a new office library and, and modernization, renovation of the current existing permanent classroom um, wings that are there, including infrastructure and, and other elements to the project. Um, we have Rupa Middle that is being designed right now, and uh, that will come on Right, right behind Glen Avon. Uh, as soon as we get the final architectural drawings complete and submitted to the vision of, of state architect, the state architect takes anywhere between six and nine months to approve those plans, and then we can go out to bid and start construction on that project. Essentially, the Glen Avon project and Harupa Middle will take us to the end of the Measure EE dollars. So future projects in design that have been under design but are contingent on state funding. So it's really important that these projects are contingent on the state uh, selling bonds and us receiving those matching funds, um, these next projects. So first, and I, I've kind of listed them by priority uh, as money comes into us from the state. Tross Street Elementary School, a reconstruction of that facility. Uh, right now we are looking at tearing down the existing school and building a new school off of Ridgeview. This site allows us to um, be able to do that because of the way that it's situated and still keep school in session. So essentially we could, we could build and keep school in session and then move the, the kids into the new facility and then what we would do is demo the, the old facility and that's where their play area would be, their play field. So we are uh, looking at, at that right now and in the design and how that will be situated on the school site. Rubidoux High School Concert Hall, this is pretty far into the design phase, uh, but again, uh, can't move forward until we start to see state money come into us. And this will support, uh, obviously, the music and uh, arts out there at, on the uh, east end of the district for both Pacific Avenue Academy of Music and Mission Middle School programs feeding into that school. So we have a comprehensive K-12 program um, there. This is, these are just artist renderings, of course, of that facility. West Riverside Elementary Classroom Modernization. So we're doing a large amount of work at the school now, uh, but we still there's still some needs that exist with the existing classroom wings that we would like to get to, um, and those would just be a, a basic modernization of those classrooms, again, as money comes in from the state. These are just pictures kind of of, of a the interior of those classrooms, restrooms that would all be updated. Again, an artist rendering of what those classrooms might look like as we modernize those uh, the existing classroom wings in the future. So that essentially would take us through the dollars that we, we are entitled to from the state as the state issues bonds. Those timelines could be 
you know, anywhere between 24 months to 48 months. I mean, there's really no telling. It all depends on how, how much they sell at a given time and where we fall on the list. Um, so those monies should, well, as, they, as those bonds sell, will start coming into us over time. So again, this, these are the immediate future needs. There's, and I'll get to this at the end of the presentation. All the schools, we still have a large amount of schools that are due for modernization. When I say due for modernization, they've reached that term, right? That 25-year term from either when they were initially constructed or when the last modernization took place. That's when we become eligible for state dollars again. So there's still a large uh, amount of schools that are eligible for modernization, and I'll go through that at the end. But these would all require addition. You know, we have to come up with resources to be able to do that. And like I'm explaining tonight, Measure EE essentially has been spoken for with Glen Avon and Rupa Middle, Troth, and those other pro, uh, projects that I shared would be contingent on state money. That essentially would take us to the end of our dollars. So anything that I show from this point on, we need additional resources to be able to do that. It's important to keep in mind that we can't access state dollars without matching some funds. We have to put money in to get money back. Um, the district has to has to be able to do that. And so, again, as I share these projects, you're going to see some numbers to those and, and understand that this is just a small piece of, of the pie in terms of what needs to take place in the future. Harupa Valley High School, this school was due for modernization. In other words, it was 25 years old uh, in 2014. Here we are in 2019. So, you know, it's, it's nearly 30 years old now. We did the innovation center. We've done some path of travel upgrades, uh, and there's still a need to to go into those classrooms. Now the school's a little bit newer; it's built in '89, but there's still a need to go in and renovate classrooms, the theater, and, and those types of areas. These are just artist renderings again of what this project could look like in the future. Harupa Valley High School. The reason I'm sharing these next schools is because and making them a priority at this point in time is because there are developments in the area. They're either at capacity or very close to capacity at this point in time, and there are future develop, developments coming in you know, within the next decade as we look at a 10-year study. And so there will be a need to, to address those schools uh, in the next 10 years. So Harupa Valley High School, this is a picture of the modernizations. Pedley is one of those schools that will be impacted with development coming in. I think we're all aware of the Paradise Knowles project. There's another small project in that area that would feed into Pedley at that point, um, you know, at some point. So Pedley would be on the list. It's all, it was also due for modernization in uh, 2012. So not only is it ready for an update, it, it could see an in increase in student population as well. Rustic Lane, there are a couple developments in the area that would feed into that this school as well, causing uh, a need to modernize and make adjustments at this school. It was due for modernization in 2013, so it is eligible for state dollars if we're able to bring in our portion of the, of the matching funds. Camino Real at capacity. Uh, again, one of our newer schools built in 1988, but it, it was due for modernization in 2013. And uh, because it is already pretty close to capacity, there are still a couple developments that may impact that school uh, that it would need uh, modernization as well. <laughs> Sunny Slope Elementary, this one's unique in that uh, we have the dual immersion program there, uh, so there's an increase in enrollment, but there are some developments that could feed into that school. Uh, the caveat to that is that one of the developments is one of the larger developments has a school site in their master plan built into that. So, you know, if, if I'm sharing this because if we weren't to build a school in that master plan, essentially we could see up to 700 kids over over 10 to 12 years feed into Sunny Slope, which obviously that school couldn't handle. And so there would be a need uh, possibly to uh, to go ahead and purchase that site in that development and build another school in that area. And that would relieve the, some of the crowding or potential crowding of students that would be feeding into Sunny Slope. Obviously, as we move forward, we will always need to keep in mind uh, technology advances and allocating dollars to to technology. When I talk about technology, it's not just the infrastructure, right? We a lot of that we can build into the uh, you know a long-term bond program, but the devices such as the Chromebooks 
would be in small, smaller chunks of money that are short-term financed um, so that we can pay for those things in a much quicker time frame uh, from, from the other projects. And so that always will have to be in kind of in the thought process as we move forward and think about, you know, how are we going to re go out and pursue, whether it be another bond or other resources. And then, uh, you know, there's been Patriot High School Stadium and pool facility. Uh, we've looked at the school site. We've looked at what would need to, to happen in order to accommodate that. Uh, and it, those dollars could range anywhere between 12 million up to 18 million, depending on what kind of facility is built there. If it includes a pool, uh, you know, some of those upgrades. And so, obviously, you know, I share this with, as part of this this portion of the project because this is all dependent on really at this point in time the amount of money is uh, you know another bond is is really the only way that we could go out and continue to upgrade our facilities um, to the level that we would like to. So lastly, just cover the state facilities program funding. Again, here's a brief uh, recap of Prop 51. So $3 billion was allocated for new construction, $3 billion for modernization, $2 billion for community colleges, $500 million for CTE, and $500 million for charter schools. So that's, that's the existing Prop 51. These are the monies that we are hoping to receive uh, with our current projects that, are, that have been submitted at this point uh, from this chunk of money. The state, at everything that we're hearing right now, they will go out for another bond in 2020. Um, and so obviously we're going to want to try and get some of those dollars as well. But as I, as I mentioned before, we have to have money to be able to apply and, and gain those grants from the state. We have to have matching funds. This one's a little bit, obviously it's small. You probably can't, I don't know if you have full slides, but I can share this with you. But the idea here is that right now all the applications that we've submitted for our current projects Best case scenario, we're looking at 62 million, getting that back from the state. That's best case scenario. Those dollars could fluctuate anywhere between 50 to 60 million dollars, uh, roughly, depending on what the state accepts in terms of the planning and the development of the school site. So, like I mentioned before, these dollars are allocated for certain projects that are already under design: Troth, Concert Hall, uh, West Riverside classrooms. Um, so this is already, these applications have been submitted. We are in, in the line, essentially. We're waiting for those dollars to come to us. The future eligibility for state's program funding. So I share this with you because uh, the second to the last column, that number down at the bottom is something like 268 million, something like that. That's essentially the needs that exist with our current schools, right? In the blue and the green, everything in blue and green on this document are currently due for modernization. They are eligible right now. The four schools that I show in blue are the only ones that we've talked about. right? So that leaves all those schools in green I haven't even brought to you as, as potential modernization with costs. right? So it just kind of shows the needs that exist within the district and the amount, even if we were to go out for a you know, a $250 million bond, it, it's not going to cover the needs that exist within our district. So that's, that's something that we really need to start thinking about is, is how we are going to continue to maintain and, and uh, improve our facilities. The small group of schools at the bottom on the left in, in kind of the pink, those schools aren't due for eligibility or uh, modernization yet. Those, those come to their eligibility term in like 2031. So you can see that there's the majority of our schools, not only are they still eligible, there's dollars available if we have matching funds to, to tap into those state dollars. And that's essentially um, what I wanted to share with you tonight. I'm sure there might be questions, so I'm happy to take any questions at this time. Thank you, Dr. Hanson. One quick question I have, uh, any idea of the state bond, the next one? How much that one's going to go be put I, to the voters? I haven't seen any numbers yet, but they, they are talking about a 2020 bond. I would imagine uh, Governor Newsom has been much more supportive mm -hmm. of the state school facilities program, and so I, I, you know, my gut would be more than the nine billion that Governor that was under Governor Brown. You know, they were trying to negotiate with a governor that that opposed the program, and so that number was a little bit smaller. So that's that's kind of our hope. I haven't seen a number yet. 
Thank you for the very detailed summary. I know um, the board appreciates that. Any questions, comments? Yes. Ms. Bradford? I have three questions. Okay. You're not surprised. I'll do the best I can to answer them. Okay, on the last presentation regarding uh, when will we see the money, what will we do with it? Uh -huh. In the far right-hand column, it says state grant requested estimate, and then there appears to be a, something annotated. In red? No, it's in the top uh, bar that's blue, far right column, state grant. Oh. And I don't see anything down in the footnotes. Or would you like to explain that later? Yeah, that, that essentially, if it's, I think that's the money that we are requesting. That's the total dollars. It's not our, it's not our match. So I, I think it's, if I can read it, it's the total dollars, our match, including the state's match. Okay, so is that what that little, it looks like it says next to estimated which is in italics it looks like it says either it's starred or it says four i'm not sure i'll have to see a bit okay I'll ask, I'll ask you later when we both can read it yeah my, my, my okay. eyes are pretty good but not that good <laughs> <laughs> um on the the page about sunny slope elementary mm -hmm. modernization do you know where in that development the school site is proposed i do and um in fact, I, we have it in another slide, okay. so I can send that to you. It's the Real Vista project, and what's that? Right, it's kind of in the center of the development. There's a park adjacent. It's, it's much. It's a lot like what Del Sol is, right? There's, okay. a, there's a park adjacent to the school site, and then they leave a chunk. I think it's just over 10 acres um, for that could be. They basically give us the option to purchase and build a school on that, on that lot. We have to a certain point. To where we accept that they, you know, in the agreements that we have with the if they ever start to move forward, at a certain point when they get to a certain point of selling a certain amount of homes, we have to let them know you're, we're either in or we're out, essentially. Okay. And what'll happen is if we choose at that point in time not to purchase and build a school, they'll just build more homes than that. On okay, that I'm parcel. I'm asking for a different reason. I'm on the board at Harupa Mountains Discovery Center, uh -huh. and they said that the people who lived in those tracks consider the Discovery Center as their park, uh -huh. um, which it isn't. So uh -huh. I I just wondered if this if any school proximity would enhance that misunderstanding. Well, yeah, and there's a there's a park in the plan right okay. next to the school, so that'll help. Well, you know how cool the Discovery Center is with all the dinosaurs. You know what the kids say, school beans, right? I wasn't aware of that, Dr. Hansen. <laughs> In our family, it's cool beans. Okay. Okay, and then going to uh, Rubido High Concert Hall. Is that proposed to be as large as the one at Patriot? No, no, and that's a good question. Th that's being designed as a concert hall, not as a theater that we're okay. accustomed to. And so it'll be a little bit smaller. It'll essentially fit on the current staff parking lot. So if you've been by Rubido on Opal, there's parking lot up against the, oh. the tennis courts. Yes. But then there's the staff lot right in front right. of the 1200 wing to sit in the 300. Stu uh, there'll be about less than 300 seats. That, that's what we would call an intimate venue so right. that uh, the audience can be up close. Right. I like that. It'll be not only the um, the concert area, right, but it'll also include two classrooms. What do you mean include two? Oh, you mean the whole building? The building, right. Okay. All right. Thank you. But this won't be used for drama classes? Yes, it'll serve both purposes, but it's... Okay. The design, we're really looking at the acoustics and focusing on the acoustics um, to, you know, for concerts, whether it be in choir or band, but it's certainly theater groups can utilize it as well. But okay. the design is more acoustic, uh, acoustically based. Is, is it going to have uh, like lighting and draperies that we don't see in this rendering? Right. Okay. Yes, it'll have a lot of different options to, or either you know, to deaden the noise, essentially depending on what type of performance will be in there. Okay, looks great. Thank you, and I'll get those slides to you and, and clarification on those. That's okay. We can just chat about it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, I had a question for Rudo uh, Track and Field. When was the last time it was replaced? 
it hasn't been replaced, so it was put in in 2007 when they did the modernization. Uh, those typically have about a 10-year lifespan, uh, so we're just we're fixing to hit, or we're about ready to hit um, 12 years. So it's it's do interesting. We looked at both Rubido and Patriot High School, thinking that you know there's there's some issues with the Patriot track as well. But when we brought brought the consultants out, they they identified Rubido as the, as the greater need. Uh, but I think it's really important to understand that that's not EE dollars. Mm -hmm. Those are, that comes from dollars from development specifically for that area. Um, and so much like what we did with Harupa Valley, you know, that's sometimes a misconception that, you know, the bond is paying for stadiums. It's mm -hmm. not. It's pay, those are being paid for, for by the developments in that area to support those schools. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Jasmine? Um, I have a comment. Um, like, um, I was going to say, like, I'm, I'm kind of, like, excited for the theater because, like, well, I mean, I kind of, like, I don't, I don't do, like, performing arts in, or theater or band like that, but, like, um, when I see them, like, practicing outside, because you said it was, like, more a concert, concert, right? So, right. like, for band and stuff like that. Yes. Oh, like, they practice, like, outside in the cold, and I know, like, that they take, well, I'm not in the cold, obviously, right now it's cold, but usually not the cold, but, um, like, they, it's, like, kind of difficult now more for them because, like, we have um, boys volleyball, so like um, they don't have that much like they're either they can only practice inside the gym like when it, we're there away. So like I like I feel like that'd be like something cool. Like, I don't know how long it's gonna take, but like it does sound like exciting. Yeah, thank you. I was at that site uh, as a principal, and and uh, you're right. They they don't have a facility. They have yeah. the gym. So back in the 50s, you know, the gym served multi many purposes. Well, you can probably imagine trying to have a band concert in a with the gym floor and and concrete walls. It doesn't it doesn't go too well, and so uh, it's much needed at this site. Anybody else? No, I agree. I think uh, sometimes I've been there late at night, or later at night, not, not that late, but uh, I know that they have to schedule time, mm -hmm. take turns going into the gym and the cafeteria, and so so definitely I think it's needed. Plus, like you mentioned, the Pacific Avenue Academy of Music is, is coming through there. So anyway, thanks again, Dr. Hanson. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Move on to 5D, Williams Settlement Quarterly Uniform Complaint Report Summary. Mr. Dubrovsky. We had no complaints. Okay. 5E, other written, other administrative reports and written communications. Mr. Deshaun. Yes, Mr. President. <clears throat> Actually, Dr. Hansen will give a short overview of any damages we had during the rains last week. Thank you. Uh, in terms of specifics, there's not a whole lot to report because we are still assessing, um, you know, damage or issues that were there. What what we're finding is that there's not a lot of you know, major damage. It was just a lot of cleanup, so extraction of water in in classrooms or offices, things like that. But uh, I think in the my original update, it was Thursday. I think I originally wrote it Thursday, sent it out Friday morning. We were around 58. We're now at a, like 127 work orders. So that shows that, and that's really occupying the majority of our time uh, in the maintenance and operations. They've been doing a fantastic job, not only during the storm, trying to get ahead and mitigate in real time uh, so that our kids can continue to learn. Sites were very accommodating. You know, some of them had, we'd move a classroom if it was leaking really bad in a classroom. They were able to move to a, a dry classroom while while our guys went to work and to, to remedy the, the area. So they've worked extremely hard. Everybody came together. It wasn't just, you know, the maintenance. It was the grounds. It was custodial staff. Everybody really kind of pulled together uh, to ensure that daily instruction could continue and, and try to you know, not have as many impacts to the daily schedule as possible. But we are continuing to assess the damage. I'm hoping to have, you know, maybe at the next board meeting, a more comprehensive report of what's coming, you know, what we found and, and some of the mitigated um, mitigation efforts that will will take place. Uh, I think it's as I alluded to in the, the email, right, is we'll do as much as we can with the budget that we have and, and, and try and get as much bang for our buck, so to speak. Uh, Sometimes, you know, if we need to go in to repair a roof of a school, that's, you know, six, seven hundred thousand dollars. It's, you know, it takes up the entire M and O budget essentially. So, you know, we really have to look at which is a, a aesthetic, which is pooling outside that doesn't. You know, we're, we're going to look at what affects classrooms 
and, and do the best and start there and then work our way uh, through the issues. All right. Any questions, comments? Any no comment? Go ahead. Sorry. Um, Sorry go. You know, that, that storm was inevitable of, to anybody. And right. your team really pulled forward and uh, thanked them all. They, I mean, some people were showing pictures and your team was out there sweeping in the middle of the storm. So um, I know they worked really hard and just tell them that thank you. Thank you. Will do. Yep, that's all I had, Dr. Hanson and, and Dana. Uh, I know that's, um, you know, I mean, it, everybody, I know my house is leaking too, and um, just caught everybody by surprise. And um, so I appreciate all the hard work. Please make sure you notify your teams of that. Okay, so we'll move on to the next item, public hearing session. Uh, Roman numeral one, hold public hearing on initial negotiations proposal from Mr. Brooks. Yes, sir. As required by law and board policy, the board should conduct a public hearing on the initial negotiations proposal from NEA Harupa for the 2019-2020 school year. The purpose of this public hearing is to provide an opportunity for the public to express its opinion to the board concerning the initial proposal for negotiations, uh, which is included in the backup materials to the agenda tonight. So at this time, the board president should formally open and close the public hearing on the proposal. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. At this time, I would like to open the public hearing session on the initial negotiations proposal from NEA Haruba. Are there any comments from the public? Seeing none, this public hearing session is now formally closed. On to item number two. Hold public hearing on initial negotiations proposal to NEA Haruba. Mr. Brooks. So again, as we are required by law and board policy, the board should conduct a public hearing on the initial proposal to NEA Haruba from the district for the 2019-2020 school year. Uh, again, the purpose of this public hearing is to provide the, pub uh, the public an opportunity to express any opinion as to the initial proposal for negotiations. Um, and again, our proposal is included in the backup materials to the agenda tonight. And so, Mr. President, if you would please open and close the public hearing on the proposal. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. At this time, I would like to open the public hearing session on the initial, initial negotiations proposal to NAA Harupa. Are there any comments from the public? Okay, seeing none, this public hearing session is now formally closed. Thank you. On to the action session. And before we, um, uh, we start, let's make sure you refresh your machines here. Your Devices. <clears throat> okay, item A, adopt and approve routine action items by consent. So, so, so. Motion by Ms. Bradford. Yes. Second. Uh, second by Mr. Tega. Any questions or comments? Okay, let's call for the vote, please. Motion passes, 5-0. Item B, award bid number 18-19-11 PD, Glen Avon Elementary Modernization Project. Dr. Hansen. On January 3rd and 10th, 2019, district staff solicited bids for Glen Avon Elementary School uh, Modernization Project. On the 29th of January, staff received an open 45 and open 45 bids from the advertised categories of work. After a careful review of each individual bid package, it was found that Inland Building Construction Companies, the lowest bidder in Category 21, did not fulfill the pre-qualification requirements listed in the bid documents. Based on this information, staff recommends the board deem this bid this bidder non-responsive. In addition, during the bid review, Chapman Coast Roof Company, the lowest bidder in Category 9, 
issued a formal request to withdraw their bid due to clerical error. District uh, staff recommends the board accept the letter of withdrawal, release the contractor bid bonds, and award a contract to the next lowest bidder in that category. Finally, one bid protest was received and withdrawn from R&D contractors for Category 5, and one bid protest was received and withdrawn from JPI Development Group for Category 18. A copy of the schedule of all the bids received in the category is included in the backup materials, and um, the information based on the information of the lowest responsive bidders, administration recommends the contracts be awarded in the categories listed there. So this evening, administration recommends that the board deem Inland Building Construction Companies a non-responsive bidder. We also recommend the board accept the withdrawal and release of bid bonds from Chapman Coast Roof Company. And that finally, that administration recommends the board award each category of work to the lowest responsive bidders as listed. Thank you, Dr. Hansen. So moved. Motion by Ms. Ortega. Second. Second by Mrs. Bradford. Any questions or comments? Okay, let's call for the vote, please. Motion passes, 5-0. Really glad to see this get started. Finally, Dr. Henson, I know there's been a lot of challenges with Glen Avon, but I know uh, every time I go out there, you know, she's like, when are you going to start? When are you going to start? So, finally, so thank you for and your team for all the hard work there. So, item C, review and approve low-performing students block grant spending plan. Mr. Dabrowski. Thank you. AB 1808 authorized the allocation of $300 million for low-performance students block grant in the 2018-19 fiscal year. Um, it's intended to support students who are not unduplicated students, meaning they're not receiving a free and reduced lunch, they are not English language learners, they are not foster youth, and their achievement levels are not where we would like them to be. So uh, based on a, a per pupil allocation number, we estimate our funds to be $831,906 that are to be spent over a three-year period to um, support with professional development activities and instructional materials and uh, additional learning opportunities, those students. And our plan is to use certificated extra duty pay for academic supports and intervention during extended opportunities, including before and after school tutoring and summer intervention, and to provide professional development, instructional materials and resources for intervention programs and services during the school day. So that, that $800,000 is a one-time allocation that we will spend over the next three years, and we can uh, report that back to the board after we have allocated those funds and, and they have been expended. Um, but at this point, we recommend the board approve the low-performing student block grant spending plan. Thank you, Mr. Borowski. So moved. Motion by Ms. Ortega. Second. Second by Ms. Regal. Any questions or comments? Okay. Mrs. Bradford. Is this something that happen, commonly happens in, in other districts throughout the state? This is a, a first time block grant that the state has offered. And so all states um, qualify for those students that meet the criteria to receive those funds. So you're saying. I'm sorry, all districts. So are you saying we're the first in the state to to apply for this and receive it? No, there are many districts applying and receiving the funds. Okay. You any questions, Jasmine? Okay. All right, let's call for the vote, please. And Jasmine, which way would you like to vote? Yes or no? Okay. I forgot the last one. Motion passes, 5-0. Item D, cast ballot for 2019 CSBA Delegate Assembly election. Mr. Duchon. The, 
<clears throat> board may select up to six candidates in sub-region 18A um, in your materials, if my computer will get there, is the um, backup. I see some familiar names on there. Um, terms are from April 1st, 2019 to March 31st, 2021. Um, the, uh, you can vote for up to six, and it appears that there are six. The candidates are uh, Mr. Robert Garcia. I think we know a little bit about him. Um, Madonna M. Gerald from Palm Springs and Price from Banning. Um, Gerald Gary Reller from Romeland. Christy Roots Robbins from Te Temecula Valley. And Chris Thomason from Urietta Valley. You, there's also provision for a write-in, and um, the ballots are due Friday, March 15th. So I think you, at this point, need a vote of the board to submit this ballot. Yep. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the slate as it's printed. A second. A second by Mrs. Chart. Uh, any questions or comments? Any questions, Jasmine? Okay. All right, let's call for the vote, please. Jasmine, I'd like to call for your vote. Yes? Okay. Thank you. Motion passes 5-0. And thank you uh, to the board for, for your confidence in me. I, I've had an opportunity, this will be my second term, uh, second two-year term, serving on the Delegate Assembly, and I get an opportunity to to um, to work with CSBA and a lot of the leadership in CSBA. And um, sometimes we get elected officials you know, that come through and um, we get to talk about what the priorities are. So I've, as I've mentioned in the past, priorities are uh, fair and f full and fair funding um, and, and other other things that the high, uh, you know, that we're all, we all, all districts, I think, um, are, are challenged with, you know, including, you know, uh, marijuana and those legalization and, you know, how school districts can handle that. So um, I look forward to, to serving again for a couple of years and I'll bring back more info. So thank you. Okay, next item, item E, approved personnel matters. E1, approve initial negotiations proposal from NEA Harupa. Mr. Brooks. During the board meeting on February 4th, the board received and reviewed the initial negotiations proposal from NEA Harupa and following the public hearing earlier this evening, several minutes ago, administration recommends that the board approve the initial negotiations proposal from NEA Harupa as printed in the backup materials as a basis for negotiations. Thanks, Mr. Brooks. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. Second by Ms. Ortega. Second. Second by Ms. Mrs. Char. Okay. All right. Any questions or comments? Okay. Let's call for the vote, please. Um, I don't think she can vote on personal. Should she vote on the proposal? I don't think so. Are they not coming up?
Okay, uh, we have to have a roll call vote, please. Uh, President Garcia? Yes. Trustee Ortega? Yes. Trustee Bradford? Yes. Trustee Chart? Yes. Trustee Ray? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries 5-0. Item E, two. Approve initial negotiations proposal to NEA Harupa. Mr. Brooks. Again, during the board meeting on February 4th, the board received and reviewed the initial proposal to NEA Harupa, the district's proposal. Following the public hearing uh, several minutes ago, the administration recommends that the board approve the initial negotiations proposal to NEA Harupa as printed in our backup materials tonight as a basis for negotiations. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mrs. Regal, second by Mrs. Chard. Um, Roll call vote, please. President Garcia? Yes. Trustee Ortega? Yes. Trustee Bradford? Yes. Trustee Chard? Yes. Trustee Ray? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. E3, adopt 2019, 2020, and 2020, 2021 academic school year calendars. Mr. Brooks. Um, President Garcia, at this time, I, I would ask that we be able to withdraw items E3 and E4 from tonight's agenda so that uh, my team and I can make some updates and bring them back on March 11th. Okay, sounds good. We don't yeah. have to do a motion or anything else. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Brooks, Mr. Brooks has some updates that he, he's got to make, and so he'll bring them back for the next meeting. Next meeting. Okay. Does that affect the calendar or the employer work here? For both, actually. Okay, yes. both? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Both E3 right. and E4. Yeah. And we still got time, so. Okay. Uh, E5. Adopt resolution number 2019-27. slash Layoff of certificated employee. <clears throat> Mr. Brooks. With the personnel report, but requiring a separate action tonight is board resolution 2019-27. slash Layoff of certificated employee, which reduces the certificated workforce by one community day school teacher. The layoff will be made in accordance with the requirements of the education code. Action is recommended at this time so that the reduction can be made effective at the end of the 2018-2019 school year and provide the impacted employee with appropriate and timely notice. A copy of that resolution is included in the backup materials. Move to approve. Motion by Mrs. Chard. Second. Second by Ms. Ortega. Any questions or comments? So, Mr. Brooks, uh, this employee would be uh, relocating to another uh, position within the district? Yes, the, this particular employee has the rights to return to a position as a classroom teacher and will be reassigned for next school year. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, roll call vote, please. President Garcia? Yes. Trustee Ortega? Yes. Trustee Bradford? Yes. Trustee Chard? Yes. Trustee Ray? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. And item F, board member committee reports or additional comments. Mrs. Regal. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, one in the evening, Jasmine, thank you so much for coming to all these meetings but you also stick it out and listen to all the information that we have to share and it's really um, a good practice you have so um, keep that up but thank you for spending your evening with us um thank you actually um, i actually um, like like i actually like saying and like listening to everything so thank you you know dr farouk and riverside unified was once on um the school board he was a student school board member so um, I, I can see that happening to you in the future. Thank you. <laughs> um, in the next couple of weeks, I keep saying things are going to slow down. I don't know who I'm kidding. Um, the next couple of weeks, um, I do have some things going on, but I plan on attending the CTE showcase coming up at the end of the month, as well as the... Um, February 26th is a pre-festival concert uh, with JMS. I am a little biased because that's my daughter's last performance in uh, winter concert, so I will be there as a parent um, and representing the board too. 
<clears throat> we also have um, the SOE. I plan on attending on March 5th, the uh, afternoon luncheon. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the Lions Club uh, reached out to me and asked them to be a judge on March 5th for the speech contest with some local students. Um, I'm excited to uh, participating in that. I'm going to walk in blind and hopefully it'll have a crash course on what I'm looking for, but I'm really, um, really great to see an organization and the district partner together and seeing our students really perform and um, give them that guidance, but also succeed locally and watch them grow in, in the future. March 8th, I will be starting the Master in Governance as well as on March 9th. I'm excited about that. So um, going back to school. Um, that's all I have for today. Thank you, Mrs. Regal. Mrs. Chard. Um, okay, um, I also attended the military interview day and it was quite exciting to see all of the military uh, veterans that had returned. Um, their ages were from, or I would say around 25, there might have been somebody a little bit younger there, to 91 years old. Admiral Hill was there and spoke, and he had quite a, a, um, a number of students around his table listening to him, and they exchanged some uh, uh, great stories. And one of the students that was um, at his table was a Vietnam student. He had moved, just recently moved here from Vietnam, so he had some interesting things to share with Admiral Hill um, about um, his country and, and how they reacted to um, to our situations. I guess he's really um, been sharing some quite stories in his history classes. Um, also, Mr. Duchon was there and President Garcia, Trustee Ortega and I, and we each spoke a little bit. We all shared a little bit of different um, reason why the veterans um, have a meaning to us. Um, but it was really, really nice. I stayed through the whole thing and just kind of watched. And the kids were really, really interested. And almost all students came back after lunch. They they could go out and they came back in and almost all of them came back to hear um, to hear the very ending and they had put on a, uh, they had videotaped and a, uh, some of the students are in ROTC and what it would mean to them to be in the military. And then they did something I've never seen done before, but they, had, well I've seen it done, but they had a ceremony where they had um, all of the flags of each of the branches of the service and they played the, the uh, their song. And then as they played the song, um, members of the audience stood up um, representing their branch of the service. And that was quite moving to see some of them. Um, and there were quite a few disabled veterans that came too, and I was surprised at that, that they, they do participate. But I understand that they, that's something that they really enjoy sharing their stories too. Um, also, I went to the Black History Parade, and I wasn't sure it was we were going to make it, but uh, as Mrs. Regal said, the, it rained, um, but it stopped. I think we had more people in the parade than there were watching. I think they were afraid of the rain, but I'm sure the festivities went on that day. The sun came out and shone for a while, and uh, they had quite a few little booths set up down uh, in front of the courthouse so people could participate. Um, well, congratulations to President Garcia for helping represent us in, as a delegate, and I'm sure that our district is going to be what well well represented um, with CSBA, with you and Trustee Ortega both being on the uh, on the boards or as a delegate. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to the date festival to watch my granddaughter show her uh, pig, and um, then we're going back on Saturday to watch the auction and perhaps bid on something. I don't know that we'll bid on her pig, but we'll bid on maybe on one of the other um, animals. And then on the first of um, oh, on Valentine's Day, my husband got me some roses from the um, uh, floral department at Rubido, the in the ag department. They got some beautiful red roses and sold bouquets of a dozen roses for $30, which was outstanding, and they're still just beautiful uh, today. So uh, if you ever get a chance to purchase from them, that helps our program. The money pays for the roses and also helps, helps each of them uh, pay for their... Um, what it costs them to go to different activities during the year, go to the festival, and uh, helps cut the cost on their raising their livestock. Um, March 1st, I will be going to Ein Arbuckle for Read Across America and Dr. Seuss Day. I'll be going as the cat in the hat. 
Uh, I, that's something that's been going on in our district for a lot of years, and NEHA sponsors that. The teachers are really, really do participate, mostly the primary grades, but it's a really good program. Um, they get com community people, um, uh, family members to come down and read to the kids, and they really enjoy hearing from firemen, policemen, um, board members. There's been other board members that have gone too, and uh, I think Mr. Duchon has gone a couple of times. So. Um, if you get a chance to get an offer to go down, you should really should go down to any of the schools. All of them, I think, are doing it. And I think that's all I have. Thank you, Mrs. Chard. Mrs. Bradford. Tomorrow is the science fair judging. I get such a kick out of going to that. My, one of my brothers was a rocket scientist, so I, I, I'm always proud of the kids who like to do that, students. But when I see things like the thermonuclear dynamics, inversion ratio of yada yada, I think, did, did a student really come up with that, or is it a parent who wants to show off? The one that I will always remember is a third grade girl who experienced her, uh, she wanted to see, do cats prefer drinking clear water, green water, blue water, is there an effect? So her pythot hypothesis and her observation and her drawings, I thought, yeah, that's genuine. That would really, don't you think so, Lisa? I mean, that would genuinely interest a kid. And I thought that was entirely appropriate grade level. So uh, if, if you want to see something fun, go to that. And also, they always need volunteers. Um, yes, let's see. I also went to the Black History Parade, which was tons of fun. We were in one of the trolleys, and the um, rain had stopped sufficiently, so we rolled up the windows. We had, um, was it the girls' swim team from Patri Riverside? Yeah, Aquats. Uh, Patriot High School football, and, and so we were representing our district, Be True to Your School, plus uh, Harupa Valley, and it was a lot of fun of waving at everybody. Okay, you, you tell that part. Um, let's see. Yes, I went to the facilities meeting. What, what Dr. Hansen showed you is, I mean, the obvious of things that we do, like the single point of entry, but he also showed us the things that are a compliance, like a grade change. And I thought, you know, whoever applauds that? Do we celebrate that? Has anybody ever thanked you for doing that? But, but that's the reason why I mention it, is that's one of the ways in which the facilities and operations staff, thank you, Dana, look out for what are we doing to provide this to be the safest environment for our students as well as our staff. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, Mrs. Bradford. Ms. Ortega. I do not have any um, committee reports, but again, uh, Jasmine, I want to say thank you for, for sticking with us, and and um, you really, truly inspire me, just looking how young you are and wanting to, you know, obtain leadership uh, skills from anybody, I think is, is very admirable for, on your part. And um, actually, Dr. Farouk was my mentor, and now I get to I get to call him my colleague and get to do things and um, travel with him to conferences and get one-on-one -on -one mentoring with him. So if you ever need a mentor, um, I know that we become role models even though we don't ask for it. If you ever need um, anything from us, please let us know. Okay? Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, and then uh, congratulations again to uh, President Garcia for on your on your birthday. Um, it, it's really special to have you today and celebrating with us. Um, also, thanks thanks to you, I will be speaking um, on Pique uh, Rubro uh, High School uh, graduation uh, next month as well. They told me that you gave um, you gave good uh, good uh, feedback on on me being able to speak on that event so I thank you for that as well and also thank you for um, for uh, allowing um, our student board members to also participate in, in, in our meetings 
And I'm also hoping I can make it to uh, Friday, um, Dr. Sue's, um, for my first time in, in Idaho. Actually, I've been meaning to go since I became a board member. I haven't had the opportunity. I've been invited, but I haven't been able to. So I'm really looking forward to, to that as well and joining you, um, Trustee Linda. So that's it on my part. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. And thanks for the congratulations. But I really couldn't stop my birthday from coming, so I'm kind of stuck with it. But I appreciate all the well wishes and um, look forward to another 50 years, hopefully. Um, but I did talk to Mrs. Collins at, at Rubido. Um, at the, actually, it was right after the military event because she asked me about it. And, I, and you know, I could, I could do it, but I know that you did such a great job at Harupa Valley, and, and that was your school. And so I said, you know, I think uh, Ms. Ortega would probably be perfect for, for doing that. And I know you really connect with the students um, with your experiences here in, in Harupa. So, so I'm glad you're able to do that. So, um, and I really don't have anything else. I think, um, I think that's about it for me. So thank you everyone for coming. Mr. Dushan, any final comments? No final comments. No final comments? Okay. Well, thanks again, the staff. Thanks for everyone to coming for coming tonight. And uh, Deputy, thanks for coming and joining us as well. And um, meeting adjourned. Thank you.